it's time to talk about those Houston Cougars in the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. You're in my first interview since I got injured, so you're actually, you're lucky, you're a good journalist. You can compare your swim, the, the good one and the bad one, <laughs> so you can see like the difference. I like to notice that, man. Yeah, I love it. Man, I appreciate how good it is. Glad that makes me feel. The Houston Cougars, the number one seed for the second time in program history, the second overall number one seed, and they are one of the favorites for um, this year's March Madness tournament uh, for the third time under head coach Kelvin Sampson the sixth time in program history um, the Cougars uh, were 31 and 3 this year and they eclipsed a 30 win mark and they finished the regular season poll number one uh, for the third time in program history it's been a historic year for the Cougars and um, it's it's a, it's supposed to be a magical finish that's what people want here in Houston and um, you know, to recap the season, the Cougars, they did lose in the American Athletic Conference title game to Memphis um, without Marcus Sasser. Um, they only had three losses, so, I mean, they were pretty dominant throughout this entire season, um, especially at Fertitta. Um, they lost to Temple by one point um, at home, and then they lost back to they lost to Alabama back in December, 71-65, after leading by 15. And some signature wins this season for Houston include Jamal Shedd's buzzer beater over Memphis in the last game to win 67-65. They beat Memphis earlier in the season. They also beat Virginia, who just got knocked out of the tournament, by the way. Oregon and Tulane, um, the Cougs, they've gone to three straight Sweet 16s going back to 2019. They're trying to make it four in a row. Of course, 2020, there was no March Madness. They are the betting favorites to get this done. It's a historic year for UH. They were supposed to be good. They were good, and, you know, it's, it's all going to come down to these next six games if they can. Um, people were like, oh, they should have been below Kansas. Well, UH had more quad one and quad two wins, and they didn't lose quite as big as Kansas did two times, So, which is why they are the second number one seed. And, you know, it's time for the UH Cougars to dance. Um, you know, a lot of people in Houston suddenly jump on the bandwagon and start following them now. So if you're looking to understand this Cougar team, this is the video for you. And um, the final four is in Houston, which is what makes this year's run even more potentially special. Um, the program has made six appearances in the final four, which is tied for 10th most all time. And they have the most final four appearances without winning um, a NCAA championship. They've twice advanced to the championship game, 1983-1984. Um, UH would join Purdue, Duke, Michigan State, and Butler um, if they were to advance to the Final Four, as they're just the fifth team to play in the Final Four in their home state. Um, the last one was Butler in 2010. Um, Final Four was last, you know, in Houston in 2016, where Villanova beat North Carolina on that buzzer beater for the championship by Chris Jenkins. Um, the Cougars will be the sixth team um, since the NCAA tournament started to play a Final Four in their home city, only the sixth school, if they were to get there. The last one was Butler in 2010. Um, you know, back in 2021, the Cougars did reach the Final Four, led by now New York Nick, um, Quinn and Grimes, and um, you know, Deshaun Giroux and at that time sophomore Marcus Sasser, um, they beat Oregon State to reach the Final Four, but they ended up losing to Baylor. Houston made the Elite Eight last year, led by sophomore Jamal Shedd, Tajay Moore and Fabian White Jr. Um, Marcus Sasser and, and um, Chamon Mark were both injured. And by reaching the Elite Eight again, Houston would break the program record for single season wins, which currently sits at 33. Um, they already have... Um, 31 wins, so they would just need a couple more, and by reaching the lead A, they would break it. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. This Houston team is more than championship ready to get this trophy back to Houston. They, they're they ready for it. This team is talented for that, um, but it's all going to come down to Marcus Sasser. Um, he's a game-time decision tonight versus um, Northern Kentucky, even though even if he's not there in the first round tonight versus Northern Kentucky, they should be fine. I would expect him to be back in the second round where um, you're going to be facing some good teams, either, um, I believe, Iowa or Auburn, so you need him for that. Um, Sasser, he's the ninth Cougar 
um, to earn a spot on the AP All-American team. Hakeem Olajuwon was the last Cougar to do so um, in 1984. So Marcus Hassern is historically good um, Houston Cougar basketball player. He's going to be one of the greats in Cougars history. Um, Elvin Hayes and Otis Birdsong were the only other two Cougars um, getting this honor. And he's also the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year. He led UH. Uh, the number one seed in the Midwest um, and scoring 17 points per game. He had 38% from three, two steals per game. He's going to be a first round pick in the draft and he came back after last year's foot injury and he's been so key for them. I mean, defensively he's been rock solid. I mean, you see what um, he's done and what how different the team looks without Marcus Sasser. So, it, you know, as much as I hate to say it, it does rely on him quite a bit here um, in this NCAA tournament run. and. The rest of the starters here, Jamal Shedd, number one. He is the glue guy, the junior point guard for this team at 6'1". Um, you know, as a sophomore, he was thrust into the situation last year um, with the injuries of Jamal Mark and Marcus Sasser. And he's been really, really good. He can, he, he's definitely shot a lot better, 10 points per game, five assists, three rebounds, 42% from the field, 33% from beyond the arc. And you know, it just feels like he shoots better than that. And he averages two steals a game as well. Um, Kelvin Samson keeps telling, how important he is to the team and uh, Jairus Walker the freshman forward at 6'8 number 25 11 points on rebounds two assists 47 percent from the field he's supposed to be a lottery pick in this year's NFL draft at 19 years old um, 34 percent from three you have Jawan Roberts the redshirt junior who's really stepped up recently was the most improved player in the American Athletic the redshirt junior at 6'7 he plays much bigger than he is he's very powerful inside and in the paint 10 points per game eight rebounds 62 percent from the field he averages a block per game as well Tremon Mark the other junior guard that I talked about he wasn't there last year and now he's going to be back if you remember way back in 2021 he had a key tip um tip in, in the second round versus Rutgers in 2021 as a freshman 6'5 he can shoot 35% from three 10 points five rebounds two assists 76% from the line um and, and a steal and that's the starting lineup right there Marcus Sasser um, Jamal Shedd, Jamon Mark, Jawan Roberts, and, and um, Jairus Walker. And don't forget about the bench players. Cougars have depth this year. Graduate Reggie Chaney, he's a sixth man of the year. He's a top player. You also have Javier, Javier Francis. He's shown glimpses this year as a 6'8 sophomore forward. Um, good depth there. He, he had scored 23 points, 17 points, and 14 points earlier in this season. Um, Emmanuel Sharp, he can also contribute as a freshman. Shoots 34% from three, 89% from the line. And Terrence Arsenal is also a freshman who can score at 6'5". So this team can can get stuff done offensively. Obviously, um, you have a good depth this year, but it all starts at Marcus Sasser, trying to open it up for the offense. And it just begins. This program, you know, Kel head coach Kelvin Sampson, he's one of probably, the, in my opinion, the best head coach in men's basketball. He's been such a blessing to the Cougars program, which is what legendary alum Jim Nance said um, about Kelvin Sampson. And, you know, he's so true because Sampson was hired back in 2014 with a not so good program. They were off the map, and he's led the Cougars back to success, back where they belong. Um, the team just plays so hard, so physical, and they just won't go away in any game. And, you know, he signed a six-year deal last year. He's, you know, he's going to be here coaching the Cougars for life. That's what he said. Um, when he took over the job in 2014, you know, the Cougars had only been um, to the NC tournament four times since 1984, and um, they didn't make it past the first round. And, um, you know, Houston went 13 and 19 in, in, in Kelvin's first year. And, um, the foundation was just being built and you know fast forward to today and here they are the Cougars heading to their fifth straight um, March Madness tournament um, and um, you know third third three straight sweet 16s and you know the program unlike the program's previous four you know whenever Calvin's been leading the way the Cougars you know have been able to go far reaching the second round 2018 sweet 16 and 19 final four and 21 and elite eight and 22 so who knows what he, what were they're going to do this year and it's such a crazy story you know he used to go out on campus and beg people to show up to games and, and now it's packed so um you know there are so much title contenders with him and they're gonna be title contenders for many many years to come not just this year and um the Cougars they're gonna be facing they're in the Midwest bracket, which is a little bit difficult. Um, if they beat Northern, Northern Kentucky, which they should, they would be playing the winner of Iowa versus Auburn, the number eight versus the number nine, which would be difficult. We need Sasser for that. Um, after that in the Sweet 16, you would 
faced the Indiana Hoosiers or uh, the Miami Hurricanes, which would be tough as well. Um, and then you head on to the Elite Eight and you would probably face the Texas Longhorns, which is really, really a tough matchup in the Elite Eight. You know, even a tough Texas A&M Aggies team is possible um, in the Elite Eight. You have Xavier as well, but UH should win the Midwest. They should. I would think head back to the Final Four. It's going to be really difficult. It's not an easy path for sure, um, but they're built for it, and they've shown why they belong there. Um, they've been number one in so many categories in the AP poll, in the coaches poll, in the Ken Palm stats. Um, you know, they deserve it, and it's just about time that they show up and get it done. So, you know, I go to UH, so go Cougs. Going to be a fairy tale ending, winning the Final Four here in Houston at home. Um, on April 3rd with Jim Nance, the legendary alum, on the call in his last Final Four. I mean, how special can that be?